Hi there, I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering and Development Magazine. Today we'll continue our discussion of conventional wind turbine designs. Just to recap, we described a conventional turbine as one with three blades and a gearbox to turn a slow rotor shaft into about 1,000 RPM for the generator. Now, as you'd expect, there are variations to this layout. For one, two-blade turbines eliminate one blade for a simpler, less expensive, and a lighter rotor. These are not in wide use because they've had limited outputs, less than about a megawatt. And they also had some vibration and dynamic problems with a rigid blade as it passed the tower. That was solved by putting a blade on a spring hinge on the hub. Still, wind farm owners are so at risk adverse that sales of two-blade turbines in the U.S. have been slow at best. Chinese engineers at Envision, however, are not so put off by the design and have built one 3.6 megawatt model. That's impressive. So you've probably heard about direct drive turbines. They're so called because they have no gearbox. And the reason for getting rid of the gearbox is that it's been a trouble prone unit. In direct drive turbines, the main shaft directly connects the rotor to the generator, a permanent magnet or so-called PM generator. In this design, powerful magnets produce magnetic fields. Spinning the copper coils through the magnetic fields generates electric current. Now you may ask, if this setup gets rid of the gearbox, why aren't all turbines equipped with permanent magnet generators? Well, there are two reasons. First, permanent magnet generators are more expensive than induction generators. And second, PM generators are heavier than induction generators of the same output, which means adding cost to beef up the towers. But the PM generators do get rid of the gearboxes, which have been a maintenance issue, and so will most likely be used on offshore turbines, where reliability is a premium. Then there's a third variation of conventional turbines, the vertical axis wind turbine, like this one. Their advantage is that they need not be oriented into the wind. They spin no matter what direction the wind blows. Another plus is that their gearbox and generator are close to the ground for easier maintenance. Their big drawback is it's difficult to make them large enough, over a megawatt, for utility scale use. A large design of this sort would need guide wires at the top to keep steady. And there's some wobble in versions without top axis support, although some inventors tell me they're chipping away at those problems. For example, here's one recent vertical axis design that holds promise for wider use. Well, that's all for now. For more videos, visit windpowerengineering.com.